Hello and welcome to Hyperdog Digital. This is Scott. Today we're going to take a look at the Motorola Mo One Action. And this is it right here. The the Motorola Action is supposed to be designed as a I don't want to say a replacement for like your GoPro or anything like that, but it's supposed to be something that you can use to take action photos and to use really quickly when you want to you know whip your phone out and get a get a video of somebody doing something you know fun or you know riding a bike or whatever something something that's action so let's go ahead and open this up and take a look and see what we got so here's the phone right here and I have already unpacked this at one point and set it up so that's why it's automatically on when it comes out of the box but uh, let's go ahead and just unpack everything and then we'll take a look at the phone here's your instructions and whatnot charging cable and your wall charger and that's it that's all that comes with it nothing else in there let's get this stuff out of the way so this is a fairly large screen it's 6.3 inch screen it has a 21 by 9 aspect ratio so it's a little tall you know, at least a little taller than, than I'm used to dealing with it's an IPS display, fully high definition plus, 1080 by 2520 pixels. It is running Android 9, and it seems to be a pretty, pretty close to stock Android. There are a few different things in here that Motorola throws in, but for the most part, it's pretty much just Android 9 on there. It's got a 3500 milliamp battery on there, so not too bad and it's got a couple of different it's got three cameras on the back and your fingerprint reader on the bottom is your USB type C and your microphone and then a speaker on one side here you have your volume rocker and your power button and on the top is your headphone jack and another microphone and then on this side, I'm not sure if we can see it or not, here we go, is your SIM card tray. Alright, now what you may also have noticed on here is that there's a little case on here. And this was included with the phone by Motorola. And this is something that I honestly wish more manufacturers would do. I just think it's, it's a sound thing to do is to, to include, you know, even though it's, it's you know, pretty pretty flimsy it's still some kind of protection right out of the box that somebody can throw on before they you know if they don't have their their case that they want to buy yet or if they you know can't afford to get a case right away or if it's a phone that is a little bit a little bit out of the norm not one of the mainstream phones and maybe a little bit harder to find a case for you automatically have one I just think it's a great idea I'm always for more protection on your phones and just you know for sale back uh, purposes and whatnot so definitely I like the idea of them putting it in there and they get a big kudos from me on that also you can see on here that there is a punch out for the camera so there's no notch it's not hidden under a screen it's not a pop-up there is just the punch out on here so that's basically the phone in a nutshell just right out of the box let's go ahead and run the specs on this and we'll come back and talk a little bit more about performance and the different features that this phone has. Alright, so, performance on this guy was actually pretty good. Uh, it's not going to win any benchmark contest by any means, but for the price, it's definitely got some decent power to it. The, I didn't have any problems running really anything that I tried to run on it. Uh, unfortunately, it seems like my benchmark for running some of these is, is running Roblox, since it seems to be what I run a lot of uh, with the kids and stuff like that. 
and when a phone doesn't really run that very well then I know it's not a phone that's gonna work very well for me and in this case Roblox runs perfectly fine on here any other game that I tried to download ran ran really well so I didn't have any problems with any game that I tried to run on there so it, it definitely definitely worked very well performance wise applications and stuff like that so uh, definitely good as far as that the battery it was actually pretty good as well it lasted almost a full day for me on some pretty heavy use and the good thing about it is that it also does have rapid charge so you can plug it in for just a few minutes and get you know a couple hours back real easy so it's definitely not a bad battery as well it seems to manage the battery and the power consumption fairly decent but of course with anything else the more you use it the battery is going to drop off a little bit now the camera on the back here is of course is what is the main feature for this guy so you start out with what is called the action camera and this is what you'd use to take the videos and whatnot and we'll show that here in just a second and then you have the ultra wide field of vision 117 degree main camera which is pixel and then you have a 5 megapixel depth camera and then of course your flash is down here and the camera actually works fairly decent it's, uh, it's pretty good it's not quite up there with the likes of Samsung and, and the pixels and, and, the, and the apples and stuff like that but it does give you some some pretty decent pictures I would show you some of the ones that I've taken on here but the 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 quality that comes through on the video versus what's on the phone just really doesn't do it very much justice so I don't think it would really give you that much to, to show it to you all over the video but the one interesting thing with this for sure is the way that you take the videos on here the screen will actually show you the video in horizontal mode or in landscape mode and it's holding the phone in portrait mode or, or vertically even if you turn sideways the camera is going to still give you like you're holding it vertically so what they've done here is they've actually taken this action camera and they've turned it 90 degrees so that when you're holding it like this so that you grab it and you immediately start to take a video you're already in widescreen mode and it, that's supposed to give you a little bit quicker uh, ability to get an action shot or when something happens and you want to take a video of it really quick you can just pull it out you don't need to worry about which way you're going I don't know that that's really that big of a deal for most people nowadays but that is that is the way that uh, they're they're thinking as far as using this and using the video and making it easier for you to take action shots now they've also got some pretty neat little photo modes which are more or less just some just some different filters that they've got They've got uh, you know your your standard portrait mode, your cutout, which basically when you take a picture of somebody, it'll cut out their their image and allow you to put something in behind them, a green screen kind of thing if you wanted to or whatever. There's spot color, which if you see I got a picture here of my my daughter, and it uh, you pick which color you want to keep, and everything else will go to black and white. So that's pretty cool. It it seems to work fairly decent. Uh, let's go back in here to the camera and look at some of the other filters. Cinemagraph uh, basically will let you freeze part of the screen and continue recording so that uh, just so you can do some kind of goofy stuff with that. Uh, that's really you know the the main differences that that this camera has on there. The spot color works fairly well. Cutout and Cinemagraph are kind of iffy. Cinemagraph really I couldn't get to work very well at all but spot color worked really well portrait works really well just general pictures and, and, and by themselves is, is pretty good as well and one other thing I want to mention while this is more or less Android 9 there are some some differences as far as uh, how you navigate through here now with with Android 9 and I, I think it was an Android 9 or maybe it was Android 10 where they introduced they got rid of the the navigation keys down here on the bottom if you wanted to and I thought that this was going to be very similar to that but it's not exactly the same they do have this one button down here but instead of swiping left or right up here to go back as you do in, in the, the stock Android you actually have to go like this down here on this button and 
one will give you your different applications that you have if you go to the right it gives you the the open applications swiping to the left is back and then just tapping on it will take you back to home so it is a little bit different swiping up still gives you the app drawer and stuff like that but that's really about it and then of course holding on it will bring up your Google Assistant so that is a little bit of a difference as far as the software that's involved and the, the software that they've got installed on here in the OS and some of the little tweaks that they've done to make it slightly different than the stock Android. Now you also have the front camera on here as well and the front camera isn't bad also you can do video output up to 4K and it's it's got its own little uh, filters and stuff like that that you can do so it's got some some nice little 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 changes or little little filters that you can put on there um, so it's got like group selfie and uh, slow motion video time lapse portrait lighting shot optimization all that kind of nice stuff that you want to have on something that you're going to be taking selfies with so it's definitely uh, a decent uh, selfie camera and front facing camera as well that punch hole is just actually just really really large though it, it really kind of drives me nuts so I'm not a big fan of, of the punch hole I'm not a big fan of the punch hole at all in general and this one is just a little bit too large for my liking the other thing about the front camera is that you're also supposed to be able to do face unlock with this now I've set this up the fingerprint reader works flawlessly, works great. Um, I'm happy to have a phone that has this again uh, with my Pixel 4 XL. There's no fingerprint reader and it still does drive me a little bit crazy, but the face unlock works amazing. Now with this guy, I did set that up and it is currently set up to use face unlock. I have never once had it actually successfully <sighs> unlock using my face. Um, maybe that's a problem with my face, I don't know. but. I assume I've set something up incorrectly, I've ran through it several times, I've looked online, I've read the instructions, which is something that I don't often do, and I just can't get it to work. So maybe it's something I'm doing wrong, maybe it's my face, maybe it's something that uh, is wrong with these phones that is going to be fixed in an upcoming patch or something like that, I don't know. So just keep that in mind, uh, but if you are fond of using the fingerprint reader, have no fear that works flawlessly works great so moving on to some of the things that I really don't like I mentioned the punch hole camera on here so that's kind of a good segue into some of the other things on here alright so the other thing that I'm not real fond of with this is the IP rating for this phone it is only IPX2 which is basically just minor liquid protection you can get a little bit of splashes on and stuff like that but definitely not going to want to get it wet or get anything sp uh, spilled on it or anything like that and I also believe that means there's no dust protection as well so that is a little bit of a letdown it's something that with me with my kids and everything that I do with them I want to make sure that I have decent protection from definitely water and, and certainly dust as well so that's really about it uh, the phone retails for, depending on where you can find it, right around $300, but overall, I, I did like this phone. It was pretty cool. It's got some neat neat different concepts to it as far as the, the way that the camera is used and some of the filters that are in there. The aspect ratio is a little bit different. It's a little bit more, uh, it's a little taller and thinner than what I'm used to, but it's not terrible. Uh, the screen is, is really good. The camera is really good battery is not terrible and it definitely uh, charges very quickly the price is is awesome I love that it comes with this this extra case on here that's that's fantastic as well not a big fan of the IP rating I, I just can't get past the punch hole it's just something that uh, for me is just I'm not really gonna see myself using a phone with one of these unless I absolutely have to so overall it's a really really good phone if it's something if you're looking for something that you can pull out and use for action photos if you're the kind of person who's always out taking pictures of your friends doing stuff then this is something that I think is is probably worth taking a look at the price is really good the camera is unique and has some really neat features to it performance is really good and other than that I, I don't know what else to say about it 
hopefully this video has been helpful for you and we'll see you again next time on hyperdog digital thanks hey this is scott for hyperdog digital thanks for watching if you want to see more videos and reviews be sure to check us out at hyperdogdigital.com if you like the video please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you know when we put up new content if there's something you'd like us to review or you have a product you want to send us for a review feel free to send us an email at reviews at hyperdogdigital.com we're also looking for sponsors right now so if you are interested in being a sponsor for our channel contact us at sponsor at hyperdogdigital.com all of our social media links and emails are in the description thanks again for watching and i hope to see you next time